So here we go. 23 must know chat GPT, chat GPT tips for beginners. Or, you know, even people who, like myself, can learn a few things. Or like the more advanced users here will learn some things, I think. All right. Uh, when you're when you're starting your prompting, it's always good to uh, assign a role, right? To get creative ideas. And let's uh, I'm gonna I'll show you some of the results that come out of these. Some of them will be kind of silly. Some of them are just gonna be you know, but they'll get, start to get you thinking about the possibilities here, right? So. Um, not many of us are really good at imitating a pirate, so I'm going to do that. But uh, And help me plan a fun-themed, say, birthday party. And let's take a look at what it comes up with. Whoops. Oh, here's one of the new... <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> um, there's a new feature that's about time... If you don't like what it's saying, you can now stop it. And bef like until a, a week ago, you had to just let sit there and let it churn through. But here we go. Uh, so one of the things that ChatGPT is going to do is it's really good with coming up with those creative ideas. If you're, you know, maybe not a creative person yourself, or you just want some some concepts. So here we go. Uh, by the way, you'll notice, right? Ahoy, matey, let's set sail on planning a great grand pirate-themed bash that'll be the talk of the seven seas. Here be your treasure map to a party filled with fun and adventure. And, okay, it proceeds to, right? It gives us the, the setting, right? Setting the scene, how the even made us a little... The starting of a of an invitation dress code uh activities and games oh that's fun walk the plank that might be interesting <laughs> um let's see the the grub it's giving us the full-on right everything that we need oh everybody would speak in pirate speak that might be kind of fun and what the favors are. So it's gone through. That sounds like a killer party. Uh, that will would be worthy of a pirate. Uh, one of the things that I find is ChatGPT is really um, kind of verbose. And it can go on and talk a little bit too long. So I always like to put like a word cap on it. And let's uh, act as Santa Claus, write a holiday greeting card for my seven-year-old ki kid telling him, <laughs> I got him a Red Rider BB gun, don't shoot your eye out. So this comes back to you know our discussion about emails. And, you know, this would fit inside of a card pretty well. I've heard <laughs> you've been very good this year, so I've packed a special gift for you, a Red Rider BB gun. Remember to always use it safely and responsibly. <laughs> responsibly. And a little advice from Santa, don't shoot your eye out. All right. Not bad. You could do this with any kind of business email too. But I always like to, you know, keep it brief with word limit. And this one is a good one. Uh, formatting your option. Uh, ChatGPT always does really good with structured writing like Michael was talking about, you know, covers letters. I'm using it for like pitching articles to editors. And you can also set it up so that it does an output that is in um, different formats. And one of the coolest one is creating tables. So if you want to compare, like compare two products or compare you know, two options. Let's see what we can come up with here. So we're creating a table of popular dog breeds sorted alphabetically, have a column for hostility, 
shedding amount and price. Okay, so what it, it's it's going through, right? And it's starting to um, create an, a table here that you could copy and paste into Excel, for example. But it's already done, right? The sorting for you and you could take it and tweak it to your heart's content. Now you'll notice we're only on C. <laughs> it might get a little bit, hopefully it's not gonna get too, too long here. I might just interrupt it. But think of how much time you'd have to do you know, put into something like this to like come up with a decision. And I'm sure you guys would come up with a more practical business oriented uh, content, but I think it's, this is the ability to output as a table is super powerful. And we'll get into some of that a little bit more. Uh, generating to-do lists right? Saving times going through reading emails and meeting notes. So you could just copy an email string and find out what you need to do next. Uh, personally, what I will do right now is I'm just going to generate a to-do list. If I wanted to build a WordPress website and I'm keeping it under uh, 200 words. And it's going through, here's the things you need to do. So is there any other suggestions of to-do sequences you guys might have? Like it can, I mean, it can come up with like anything. I want to build a patio. I want to, you know, there's uh look at that. I've got a network error. Um, there's, so many possibilities uh, for to-do lists. And you, you know, one of the things you can do as well is just talk to it, sketch out your basic concept for a project you're working on and ask it to come up with a to-do list and it will break your task down into everything that needs to be done pretty much. And like, holy cow, there's your whole, <laughs> I just came up with the full plan right there all right by the way i don't do these um because as soon as you hit that oh did they finally take it away uh, i hope so uh usually when you do when you give it feedback it'll ask for more like your specific reasons which is a pain and it looks like they took that away a day or two ago so Yay. Um, all right. So another thing is you're going to come up with so many of these chat sessions. How do you keep them organized? And the best way to kind of go in and do that is I'm just going to click on, you know, the title of one of my chat sessions and hit rename it. And I'll get into sharing in a second because that is also really handy. Um, so you'd rename it. And it's, you know, putting a date on it can help. There's different ways you can organize it to make it pop a little bit more. Um, whoa. This, okay, well, that's a tangent. <laughs> I'll get into, we'll skip that one. Uh, let's see, estimate task completion time. And, you know, apply this to any project that you can, that you can think of. Let's go back to, I think I was somewhere around here. Give these chores an estimated time to completion, then organize them from high to low. I have a four bedroom, two bathroom house with a family of four, dishwashing, vacuuming, cleaning the bathroom and dusting. So here it's going through and it's starting, I think it's a bit high on the estimates. You don't have to, you could make it more concise, right? But I, um, it's explaining its reasoning 
so that it can kind of figure it out in its head and you know you could adjust it accordingly but it doesn't do too bad of of a job frankly of coming up with some of this stuff and if you want it if you want to get really good results sometimes this will help with the hallucination too if you want to help minimize um hallucinations either explain step by step or give references like um, give me a url reference that also can help clarify where it's getting its information from so you can figure out if it's hallucinating or not um this is one of the best explain complex subjects and terms anyone can understand and I'll use this on scientific papers, on really complex uh, topics, and it it does a really solid job. So let's see how how good it is here with our explaining the theory of relativity. Right? Imagine you're in a super cool spaceship zooming through space. Um, now, the theory of relativity, which was thought up by a really smart guy named Albert Einstein, is kind of like a set of rules for how do things move and how time works when you're going super fast, like in your spaceship. So there, it continues to go through. It's even enthusiastic, right? Now, the super interesting part, if you had a super fancy, so, you know, you might want to clean some of this up, but, you know, it's going through and explaining a pretty complex topic in terms you can understand. Now, if you wanted to have it explain it at a PhD level, it could do that. At a high school level, it'll do that as well. And that that's one of my my favorites, uh, especially when you're just trying to, you know, speak to people and you've, you're afraid you're gonna talk over their head. All right, share your threads with friends. There's two ways you can like, access that. So say you come up with something great. You got this like killer thread. Um, I was doing one. Let's see if I, maybe I have it. Maybe I can find it and maybe not. I had a, um, a project that I was working on where I wanted to show somebody how to do a pitch to a magazine article and if you come up here, you can go to share chat and that'll give you, uh, right? The, there's the chat. You don't have to worry about that. Just hit the copy link and then you can send that to a friend and they can see what you were just looking at. If you're excited about it or you think it's extra good or whatever. Okay, next one, change your tone of voice to make it more formal, more conversational. You can even put emotions into it. So write, write me a brief email, make this more formal, speak in a business tone, or make this more angry, enthusiastic, exciting, or dramatic. And... It does a good job with drama, by the way. It'll do humor pretty, pretty okay. So if you, maybe you're humor challenged, you can have it throw in some puns or make things more funny. Um, it's, yeah, we'll leave it at that. If you've got any questions, let me know. All right, be concise. One of the things is, you know, in the beginning, I think a lot of people had really long prompts. Just keep it short and concise and you'll get you'll get better results. So it it's the way these things work is they look at the words that are in your question and they start um, figuring out what the right answer was through this database setup that's kind of interesting. It doesn't really matter. But the more the shorter your prompt is, the, in a nutshell, the better <laughs> your results are going to be. So you don't have to give it a big long explanation. It might actually just confuse it. 
it's strangely similar to human that way, right? Like you can certainly over explain things. Um, so next, change uh, your style of writing. Now, in here, we're having it kind of pretend like it's Darth Vader. We have our problem. And uh, you can have it come up with an advertising idea. So maybe this would help with, you know, getting more kids. Uh, how, did you say you were working with St. Francis? I heard St. Francis in there someplace, I thought. Mike? Um, yeah. So, you know, how do you... Maybe this could help somehow, except for write a um, a proposal to get, write whatever. I'm trying to get people engaged in my organization. Um, pretend like you're Santa Claus and, you know, give, I'm just trying to spitball here a little bit, but it, right? Experience the power of detailing in a garage not so far away. Embrace the dark side of cleanliness. Your vehicle, once a mere machine, will be transformed under our meticulous care. Feel the force of our detailing as we banish every speck of dirt and grime. So if you're trying to, like, get volunteers to, like, pay attention, I think, you know, something like this could be... <laughs> you're certainly... It's it's kind of hard to not want to read it, right? Well, it's, it's pretty clever. Um... Yeah. Right. So it's, I think one of the key things here about prompting is thinking outside of the box. And once you understand these kind of basic constraints, it'll give you, I, you know, ideas of, Oh, I could, you know, I could have it be a, a homeless person. I could have it be a, um, super enthusiastic volunteer. I don't know. Uh, let, let's see. There's, it's really good at generating lists. I don't know if any of you guys were into the book of lists. When I was growing up, there was this book of lists and it was just lists of everything. This does a great job of just coming up with any kind of list whatsoever. As like a starting point in your research, right? ChatGPT is a great research tool. And... You know, let's see if it comes up with some people maybe we didn't think of. It might be interesting. It's getting all the the main people. You don't hear much about them. Uh, we might take this. Ooh, Rommel, Charles de Gaulle. So see how it's getting a bit verbose. You might say, come up with a list of 10 people, for example. I don't know this guy, uh, Georgi Zukov. So it might, you know, in the course of research, it might be might be useful to come up with some of this stuff. Uh, and because you can use this to tell a story. And let's see if this comes up. Uh, it'll be coming up briefly. Uh, let me do this one first, though. So as a marketing guy, one of the things I like to do is... Check out websites. Let's see what it does here when I put in my own website and gives me, uh, I'm looking for advice on SEO, how to improve it. Right now, one of the things it's doing is going out and is actually using Bing to crawl the website. Look at my copy. It's, right, presents himself as a copywriter content creator specializing in AI. Looks like we're hitting some walls today for some reason. Not really sure why it does that. So when you hit regenerate the response, you'll notice that it literally wiped out the whole response and let's, it'll come back at this again. One thing is it will never, I have found that it never rewrites something the same way twice. It'll always be new because of the way it works. 
but here it is, right? So the site offers a range of stuff. Here it is, content <laughs> optimization, mobile responsiveness, page load time, all the things that you need to do to get better SEO. And yeah, super useful for doing that kind of insight. There's other ways to make make those results better, but we're keeping it light today. All right. This is, I think, something, um, you know, when you write something, maybe you just want to do a grammar check. And I think one of the things when you ask it to rewrite is it might go like really long and it could go, um, you know, just kind of get into the weeds a bit. So I like to always kind of say, you know, specific things like make it more concise and persuasive. And I don't got an example on that, but that can, you know, help with writing emails and other documents as well. And especially trying to keep the rewrite to a minimum, because otherwise it can go and do like a full rewrite, which is kind of a pain. All right, uh, guide me step by step. Let's help me create a terms of services. Now, uh, for my website, give me questions I can answer. And after I answer them all, generate me the terms of service in a proper format. So you may not know, right, all the things that you need to collect to come up with, say, a terms of service for a website. And when you're asking it, to give you questions, that's a super powerful uh, approach because it helps you think things out. It also helps ChatGPT um, kind of think things out a little bit as well. Now you'll notice it's going through and it is asking all of these all at once. So what I'm gonna do is Give me questions I can answer. Wait for me to answer them. One by one. After I answer them, okay, let's see if it, hopefully it will just ask one question at a time rather than asking all of them. Okay, so there. What's the primary purpose? So then it's basically interviewing you, right? And um, so let's just do e-commerce. And there it goes. It's gonna start to collect all this information together. And ChatGPT does pass the bar at a 90% level. So it's got pretty, pretty good legal information. This is, by the time we go through all of this, it will, uh, have a pretty solid, probably terms of service for you that you could run by a real lawyer or whatever you want. But um, I'm going to tell it to stop this line of inquiry. You could start a new um, chat, but I want to clear that cache so that we can go to the next thing. And storytelling. So storytelling is a great way to persuade persuade people. Uh, and it's hard to write a story, right? But a story always has structure. And how about create a story about Elon Musk um, and his plan to take over the world with AI? Keep it, or I don't know, a persuasive story of any kind that you can think of. Um, how about tell me, tell me a Christmas story about a small uh, child who gets help from my organization to I don't know have a full Christmas dinner. I don't know.
And you could use the, you know, you could collect this, base this on actual, you know, an actual story that you've collected from your, from interviews. And it's going to, right, it's going to go through and put in proper, proper information. The more information you could give it for the story, the better. But once upon a time in a small snowy town, there was a young child named Jamie. Jamie's family had fallen on hard times. The joyous spirit of Christmas seemed far away that year. With no grand feast to look forward to, Jamie felt a little blue about amidst the town's festive lights. But then something wonderful happened. So, you know, it goes through. You could constrain that by length of words, by giving it more information so that it could fill in a more comprehensive story. And I think the thing with storytelling is if you want to get people to remember you or do something, telling a good story is a way to do that. And it can be an entree into a persuasive piece of your choice. You know, like this is why you should give us, <laughs> this is why you should give us money at Christmas or whatever. But it does really good with imagining like any scenario you can think of. So it would... <laughs> I guarantee it, it would have been interesting to do this dialogue. Um, but we're going to go to the next item. I don't know if you guys, if anybody here was into Portishead. Uh, they're, they were amazing back in the day. And you want, you know, I love the song off of um, the Dummy album, Wandering Star. Can you suggest other albums like it? Now let's see if it, yeah, Massive Attack, it, it mentioned that one previously, but right. It's, it's nailing the trip hop vibe. It's getting into some people that I know about some people I don't know about and, you know, giving, wow, <laughs> this is taking me back to some more Chiba and massive attack. Anyways, it's, it's, um, really good at making recommendations for things that are similar to what you're interested in. Next, brainstorming new ideas, like, uh, let's come, and we're gonna, we're gonna put in some modifiers here. So help me brainstorm clever business name ideas for a content creation service. And this is where you can see ChatGPT's wit really kind of pops out, hopefully, if we got this. Content crafters, narrative nest, creative content co, story stream studios, idea ink innovations, pixel pulse media. They got any, um, let's, okay. I'm gonna say pause. Can you make them funny? Or how about punny? And right-minded, pros and cons, pun and ink, script tease. <laughs> uh, it's really good with bad puns or puns, just going to say. Um, but lots of different types of humor. Great for just, you know, coming up with, you know, you could say, I like number three. And then, you know, let's do a marketing plan or a business plan or whatever you want to do. It it can, it would use that as the beginning of that whole thought process. So I have no idea <laughs> what Mid Journey was thinking of here, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's keep going. <laughs> since we got such a short time left, we have uh, the ability to export data. Now that's an, that's a good one in case you don't, in case you don't get down into these settings very much, custom instructions, got to have them. They're so critical. Um, you know, I have mine set up to write in a clear, concise style of Hemingway and some other things, don't include le legal disclaimers, etc. But the one that we're talking about right here, 
right? Clear all chats. Don't want to do that quite yet. Uh, let's see. Always interesting to see what they sneak in here. But here's export data. And I'm going to confirm the export. So what this is going to do is it'll give it'll um, send me a zip a link to a zip file. And it has my email on, on file and it's going to be able to help. It's going to basically give me all my chats so that I can do, you know, I can have them in some place if I want to go back and do something with them. Cause man, you get overwhelmed really quickly with this stuff. Okay. Next, create custom plans. This is a fun one. Generate meal, exercise, weightlifting, reading, or other things you want to do. Plans for doing those. And um, let's just do that. So I'm going, I want to generate a weekly meal plan for me to lose five pounds over the next month. I'm 195. Whoops. So I gave it. I said, I want to lose five pounds, but really it's 10 pounds. That may confuse it. It may not. Let's find out. 45, I'm giving it my age and my exercise. And here it starts to go through. Creating a pretty comprehensive meal plan. Now, if you want any of these recipes, like, okay, um, Give me a recipe for chicken stir fry. By the way, I gave some some other information, you know, pair this with exercise routine for balanced weight loss. Just going to say you can dive really deep into that, but we're not going to today. Anyhow, here's our, here's the recipe for that meal. And you can hit this button right here, and that's going to copy it to your clipboard so you can stick it into a Word doc or anything you want. And super useful. Now, to kind of wrap things up a little bit, we have <laughs> speak to it like a human. You get surprisingly better results if you take a deep breath. And it's weird. You can look this up or you... I believe in you and you got this and it will do uh, it surprising how it can help um, the AI get better results. Who would have thunk it? And it's pretty scientifically proven. So check it out if you want.